You're not waiting for your success to feel empowered. That's the old model of reality of cause and effect. In other words, the materialist, the person who's waiting for their wealth to come to feel abundant. So then most people's biology is, for the most part, their past. And so if you're not being defined by the vision of the future, some new possibility in your life, you're only left with the old circuitry in your brain and the old emotions of the past. So the question then is, can you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet, but you've thought about enough times in your mind that your brain is literally changed to look like the experience has already occurred. Now the latest research in neuroscience says you can change your brain just by thinking. So then as you begin to think about a new possibility and your brain begins to fire in new sequences and new patterns and new combinations and you begin to plan your behaviors and you begin to review in your mind, mentally rehearse who you're going to be in your life. The mere action of mental rehearsal begins to install the neurological circuits in your brain. Now your brain is no longer a record of the past. Now it's in fact a map to the future. And if you were then to begin to emotionally embrace your future before it's made manifest, in other words, you're not waiting for your healing to feel wholeness. You're not waiting for your new relationship to feel love. You're not waiting for the mystical moment to feel awe. You're not waiting for your success to feel empowered. That's the old model of reality of cause and effect. In other words, the materialist, the person who's waiting for their wealth to come to feel abundance, they're living by that model of cause and effect. But the quantum model is about causing an effect, which means you begin to experience your own worthiness and your abundance before it occurs. You have to feel wholeness in order for your healing to occur. We have to feel love for ourselves and love for life in order for us to have love in our life. And so then to instruct people how to teach their body emotionally how that future could feel like before it's made manifest, if they do it properly, their body as the unconscious mind begins to believe it's living in that future reality in the present moment. And they're beginning to signal new genes in new ways that begins to change their body to look like the event has already occurred. So the process of change in the meditative model requires unlearning and relearning. It requires breaking the habit of the old self and reinventing a new self what we say in neuroscience, pruning synaptic connections and sprouting new connections, unfiring and unwiring and refiring and rewiring, unmemorizing emotions that are stored in the body and then reconditioning the body to a new mind and to a new emotion, no longer signaling the same genes in the same way, but signaling new genes in new ways. Well, a habit is a redundant set of automatic, unconscious thoughts, behaviors and emotions that's acquired through repetition. Turns out, by the time we're 35 years old, we're a set of memorized programs. And so the body is functioning and the mind is unconscious. So then when there's crisis or there's trauma or there's disease or diagnosis or loss, the event sometimes causes people to feel so differently than themselves that they can finally see themselves through the eyes of somebody else. Now, that moment in neuroscience is called metacognition. This is the moment where we start paying attention to how we think. We start thinking about what we're thinking about. We start noticing how we're acting, how we're speaking. We start becoming aware of the emotions that we live by. And the moment you start observing those states of mind and body, you're no longer the program. You're the consciousness observing that program. And we begin to objectify our subjective self. In other words, you can't read the label when you're inside the jar. You've got to get out of the jar to be able to see who you are. So most people wait for that moment where they feel so bad they could finally begin to make an effort to change. And of course, times are changing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my message is why wait? Why not just start creating a future every day and begin to think differently? You mm -hmm. begin to act differently and begin to feel differently. And if you do that enough times, that becomes the new habit. We may not be able to control everything in our outer world. Right but we certainly can control our inner world. And so it's not so important to not react. I mean, everybody reacts, I react. The question is, how long are you gonna react? 
So if you keep an emotional reaction going on for an extended period of time, you're memorizing that emotion and your body as the unconscious mind is believing it's living in the same past experience 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. The body uh, doesn't know the difference between the real experience that produces the emotion and the emotion that we create by thought alone. So then the emotion then reaffirms the state and then people start to use the problems and the conditions in their life to keep that emotion going and I would call that an addiction. So we become addicted to the very life we don't even like. So it's important then for people to realize then when you have that moment where you have crisis or something breaks down that you do have control over it and it's a formula and it's a skill and our research shows that you can teach people how to do that. And so then when you're living by some emotion there'll always be a gap between the way things appear and the way things really are. Emotions alter our perception and if you act during that time You'll always say the same thing. I should have never said that. I should have never done that. I should have never mm -hmm. thought that. I should have never sent that email. So then shortening your emotional reactions is a level of intelligence then that causes you then to recalibrate. Because most people don't think they have control over that. They'll say, that person did it to me. That right. circumstance is the reason I am this way. And I would say, if something in your outer environment is controlling your thoughts and feelings, then you're a victim to your environment. Yeah. And yet... How you think and feel creates your outer world. So if you're thinking and feeling equal to everything that's known in your present personal reality, you keep creating more of the same. So to change then is to think and feel greater than the conditions in your environment. And to be able to do that to such a degree then you're no longer reacting to the same people in the same way. And that takes an effort. It's, and it's not easy in the beginning. But once you start practicing, you get better at it and just like anything else you start to move through your life with more coherence and you're less likely to knee jerk and if you're less likely to knee jerk then you're not in an unconscious program I mean everybody I believe has done something great in their life yeah. everybody's done something great and what happened you just got a wild idea right you got a vision of some possibility you were struggling with your present circumstances and all of a sudden you weren't so interested in checking your cell phone every two minutes right. you weren't so interested in the dinner that you were supposed to go to a person you usually call up and complain to picking you're up not your phone and you're not, yeah you're not interested mm -hmm. in the television show all of a sudden you start thinking and contemplating is there a new way to do this is there a better way what would it be like to be healthy to be happy to be free to have a new career a new relationship the moment you ask that question you turn on the creative center in your brain your frontal lobe the workshop and the frontal lobe has connections to the entire landscape of the brain and so it wants to answer that question. It's the forebrain. It's, our, it's, the, it's a place where we speculate possibilities. We invent. We have attention or intention. So the, we say, what would it be like to have a new career? And the frontal lobe goes, okay, let's look to see what we have stored in the brain. I have a certain amount of knowledge and a certain amount of experience. And it begins to select these different networks of neurons mm -hmm. and begins to call them up in, in relation to that question. And when the brain starts firing in tandem, all of a sudden you get a picture in your mind. That's called intention. Mm -hmm. You're selecting a new potential in the quantum field. Now, to the passionate person, the thought that they're having in their mind literally becomes the experience. And the end product of an experience is called an emotion. And when you combine a clear intention with an elevated emotion, you're beginning to change your brain and body from living in the past present reality to living in the future present reality. And the stronger the emotion that you feel, the more you'll pay attention to the picture in your mind. Mm -hmm. And now you're beginning to emboss the circuitry in your brain, creating a long-term memory and emotionally conditioning your body into that future. And we could say then, you're remembering your future. And now the idea then is to get up and to get your behaviors to match your intentions. Mm -hmm. You have to then stay conscious of those thoughts that say start tomorrow I'm too tired this will never work it didn't work last time you gotta be the governor of those thoughts you gotta start making different choices and the hardest part about change is not making the same choices that you did the day before over over. so you gotta review the choices that you're not gonna make you gotta think about the behaviors you're gonna change even how you speak
Mm -hmm. What experiences do you need to stay away from with certain people in certain places and times? And what emotions bring you to a lower denominator that causes you to no longer see that vision because that emotion, that familiar emotion, is going to cause you to view your future through the lens of the past. So then, then you, when you combine a thought and a feeling, it's called a state of being. So then your job is to maintain that modified state of mind and body your entire day to keep your energy up, independent of other people and the conditions in your life, mm -hmm. independent of the habits and emotional addictions in your body, and independent of time. And I say, if you do that properly, get ready, because something unusual is going to happen in your life. It's the law, and it's going to come in a way that you've never thought of. That's the unknown. You know, it's really interesting, because when you create from three-dimensional reality, get ready, it's going to take time. Because you're going to create more of the same. Well, well, not only that, if you're going to create like a vision, a dream of what you want, a new job or whatever, it's a new relationship, a new house, it's going to take you time to go get it because you've got to drag your body through space and it takes time. Yes. When you create from the fifth dimension, you actually are doing the opposite. You're actually collapsing space and time and you're drawing the experience to you. You don't go and get it. <laughs> when there's a vibrational match mm -hmm. with your energy and something in your future and you're creating from the fifth, you're not playing by Newtonian physics any longer. You're playing by quantum, which means now you are drawing your future to you. You're the magnet to mm. your destiny. So things start showing up in your life out of nowhere because you created them from nowhere. Something appears out of nothing because you created from nothing and it happens in no time because you created it in no time. And so now you're less likely to go and get it. <laughs> you're more likely to, to tune into it and bring it to you. Mm -hmm.